Liverpool schoolgirl Olivia Pratt-Corbell. The nine-year-old was shot dead last August when drug dealer Thomas Cashman chased another criminal into her home in Dovecot. During his trial, 34-year-old Cashman claimed he was a high-level cannabis dealer and insisted he wasn't the gunman. But a jury found him guilty of five charges and he'll be sentenced on Monday. Well, the BBC has been speaking to Darren G from Anfield. He was jailed in 2006 for conspiracy to murder. But since his release from prison, he's campaigned to stop others from joining gangs. He told Five Lives Nicky Campbell about the time he met Thomas Cashman and where he fitted in the pool's criminal underworld. For career criminals, you participate in violence, you get recognised by the hierarchy, you get recruited by them. Over the years, if they don't go into jail or they haven't been shot dead, they eventually climb up this ladder into the top levels of organised crime in the city. Before you know it, they've went into Europe whether it's Germany, Marbella, places like this. And that's where the real organised crime is. The people that run it, the people that bring the drugs in. When you're speaking about Thomas Cashman, and he's a high-level criminal in the city of Liverpool, he's not. He's just a lad on the street with his own... He's got his own reputation. He's very violent with a firearm. He's gained a reputation to his fear. Alongside that fear comes a lot of uh, pull so he can sell his drugs. But he is nowhere near the top levels of crime in the city of Liverpool. Did you the ever top come across him? I've met Thomas Cashman. I've had him sat on my couch in my, in my apartment in Anfield. He had a firearm on him at the time. This was years ago. This was 2019. Can I ask you a question about that? And then, then please expand on your point. So he's firearm. What would have happened if you had informed the police after he'd left the house that you'd had this guy in your house and he had an illegal firearm and they need to speak to him? What would have happened? Well, to give you a little backstory to how he ended up on me couch with his firearm, I've done a long time in custody. I've been a part of that, the, the criminal fraternity in the city of Liverpool since I was 13 years of age. I ended up going into prison for conspiracy to murder. Done 18 years, got released in 2016. And then from then on in, I promoted a message of Calmac UK, which stands for Choose a Life, Not a Knife, United Kingdom. During that process, I've ended up going down the path of targeting organised crime groups. Now, because I was targeting these organised crime groups, I upset a lot of individuals. And when I mean target, and I mean being very verbal, you know, screaming and shouting their names across the city, across social media platforms. And what that done, it brought me a lot of trouble and a lot of hatred from the criminal fraternity. And I was screaming about one particular group who Cashman was aligned to. And because they wanted me to stop screaming about them, they sent Cashman to have a meeting with me. And that's basically what it was. It was a meeting where Cashman's asking me not to mention certain names within the city of Liverpool. And what about those now who stand up to it and have stood up to it? If you'd said, look, if you'd... What's that terrible word earlier on that we had grasped, as it were? If you'd done that, how endangered would you be? Well, to be honest with you, that's what I get labelled. I get labelled that by the criminal fraternity. I've had my apartment burnt out. I've had attempts on my life through what I preach. Um, and I'm, I'm labelled a grass continuously by these um, gangsters, if you like. The majority of who I know and I was raised around and I was in prison with. So to the general population, the minute they're um, suspected of being informers with the police, you can have a family that's lived on a housing estate in the city of Liverpool since the 70s. The children, the grandmother, the dad, they've been on that community for the last 30 years. The new breed of criminal, as soon as they get any sort of indication that you're cooperating with the authorities, your house is getting bombed, your house is getting petrol bombed. The kids are getting harassed on the way to school. It's, you know, you just get targeted till they've been moved off the estate. That's why this wall 
of silence, if you like, is very powerful because there's been that many incidents of violence and intimidation towards suspected snitches. Well, that's what they call them, snitches. I just want to talk in, in, uh, in general terms, uh, if I may. Some of the people who are still involved, uh, you know, up to their necks in it at the moment, it's, I mean, you've been talking about the, that impenetrable wall of silence. That's one thing. But those people who are still up to their necks in it, what would they think about this killing? Would they be horrified? The, the higher levels would be absolutely horrified because uh, in two ways, you know, some of them still have a bit of moral compass in them, like the old school ways, don't attack children, don't attack, attack women and so on and so forth. But the real reason we're, we're, the real reason to be discussed away is because it stopped their business from proceeding until the investigation was dealt with. So the minute... The minute this young girl is being murdered, it impacts on their way of business. They can't move around the city. They can't push the drugs the way they normally do. So that'll be the lower level. You don't really care, to be honest. You've got no moral compass. You know, there's nothing. You'll have, you'll have a few in there who, who are, see what you've got. You've got violent drug dealers, and then you've got drug dealers. You've got drug dealers who come, some drug dealers come from very stable homes. You get into it for the money. Then you've got the violent drug dealers who end up dealing drugs due to the notoriety from violence. The point is, when, when you're referring to organised crime groups and you're saying the youth 14, 15, 16 are part of these OCGs, as they're labelled, they're not, they're very disorganised. It's like it's like a group of mates doing what they can to earn money. There's no one really in charge. What happens is they become like a feeding pot to the hierarchy in the city. So, for example, within these youthful groups, you'll have good car robbers, good car drivers. You can recognise the, the, the you can recognise the kids that have got more gameness within them out the group. And they're the kids that get recruited. So, for example, if a kid runs around, this, if a 16-year-old kid runs around with a firearm and shoots someone in the leg, the hierarchy will look at him going, he's game, we could do with him on board with us. <coughs> to get him, to bring them on board, to give them money, to look after him. And eventually, he ends up with a body count. Once he's got the body count, he becomes very feared within the city. And he sort of keeps lower level criminals in line for the top level criminals. And basically that's what Cashman was. He was a lower level criminal, very dangerous with a firearm, able to keep lower level criminals in check for the hierarchy. Well, that was Darren G um, speaking to Nikki Campbell on Five Live today.